In the past week, we talked about building your own platform online, your website, your base, basically. Today, I want to show you how you actually can start building pages with Cornerstone. As you can see on my channel, I basically did a couple of videos about WordPress in the last seven days. And today I want to focus on Cornerstone. Cornerstone basically is a page builder on steroids. The normal page builder in WordPress is just a what you see is what you get kind of editor, but you cannot really do a lot more than just edit the standard HTML and use something like bold text or do something like links and pictures. With Cornerstone, you can do much, much more. You can do contact forms, you can do accordions, you can do lists and have more icons and you have sections you can control and you can do pretty much anything you think of. Obviously not anything, but a lot. <laughs> Now you can use Cornerstone for pages as well as blog posts. But the thing with blog posts is that I would not recommend to do that. With a website I had in mind whilst doing this kind of tutorial series, Cornerstone will probably be the only thing and pages will be the only thing you're using because the website you're building is pretty much only based on one about me page basically and maybe a contact form or something like that. But if you're actually building a blog, I would not recommend you to use Cornerstone to also build the blog posts because for one, it is much, much more work and for blog posts, I would try to keep it simple. But the second reason is that if you eventually or at some point in time, and let's hope that never happens, want to change the theme, then you would be pretty much out of luck because Cornerstone is such a core base of the blog posts that you would have to kind of manually bring that post over or each post over. But if you blog a couple years, that could be potentially hundreds of posts depending on on your schedule. So I would highly recommend you not to use Cornerstone for blog posts, but on the other side for pages, I would definitely recommend it because in general, a website probably has about 10 to maybe 20 pages and those get updated, but they never really change a lot and you don't have that massive list of pages on your website. Now let's head into Cornerstone, see what it can do and I will show you a couple basics and how I would approach building a landing page or a about me page, for example. As you can see here on the screen, I am back on the universitychooser.com website that I have chosen to build this kind of tutorial page on. Currently, I am not logged in and this is how the page looks. We have no menu assigned. We have the title here. We have a page here. And I will show you again how you can get a sample page or a page in general set up as the landing page because here normally you would have the blog posts but we don't want to have the blog posts on the landing page we want to have a custom designed page and we will also most likely get rid of the sidebar because i think that the main page or the landing page should be in the full width of the page and the sidebar is more something also for the blog to kind of get people to know that there's more content than just the posts that they see currently so i will log in now, once we are in the administration panel, we can go to the pages area. And here in the pages area, you see that I have this sample page and that is currently made the front page. Now, if you want to create a new page, you just click this add new button right here. And then we get this nice screen, which is the standard WordPress editor. And there we can say, for example, something like home. So this will become our new landing page or home page. We will instantly publish this page. You can also save it as a draft and keep it private for the time being. But I want to do one thing first. I want to make it the new landing page for this domain, basically. So we go into the settings. Inside the settings, we go to reading. And here we have the front page displays and you can either say your latest blog posts or you can say front page. And I have set the sample page so I can now set this new page which is the home. We can save that. And if at some point you decide to have a blog, you can also do that. Just go to back to the pages, create a new page. I would definitely call that blog or news if you prefer that. Publish that page go back into the settings, into the reading area. And now you can select it right here. And we save that change. And just for a demonstration purpose, I will now go to that blog page. And as you can see, you will now find those blog posts here. So it is the blog. And now you have the blog posts and your sidebar. And if you go to the page itself, then you will find the blog post and the comments. The blog itself can also be heavily customized with the X theme, but we are not talking about that today. We are talking about the landing pages building with Cornerstone, but I just wanted to make sure that you know how to set up the blog in the WordPress interface if you want to have a different landing page and then the blog page in a separate way. 
Now we are going back to the dashboard and in the dashboard we are going back to the pages and what you will see here is that there's these two markers which is the posts page and the front page so you instantly know which ones are actually being used for the landing page and which one is the blog page. Landing pages is kind of a broad term I use it kind of um, interchangeably with the front page of a website and the landing page where you send people to a first land on your page. But in general, a landing page can be something that you, as mentioned, send people to. So if you have a special offer, you might as well have a special landing page for that. Or if you have a book, then you will create a book landing page. So if you bring people to your website that you want to have an experience to immediately see your books, then you would send them to the book page. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the landing page of your blog and maybe also have a look at building a about page, for example. So we are going to edit this page and what you will notice is that you can edit it either with the normal interface or with Cornerstone. If you go into the normal editing interface, you will also have the option right up here to have the visual, the text or the cornerstone editor. And since the cornerstone editor is a what you see is on what you get, but on steroids basically, it has to load on its own page. So once this page has been loaded, you will see that on the right side, you will have a preview of the site you're currently using or you're currently designing. And on the left, you will find a lot of interfaces. And we have that right here. So we have the preview here and we have the sidebar here and you can add a couple sections and now let's look at the top here here you have the layout banner then you have the elements basically the whole all the stuff you can put onto the page into those boxes you have the inspector which will be used if you select an icon on the page here and you will notice how that works in a, mi in a minute. And then we have the general settings and the general settings are genius because we can do a couple of very important things here. For example, we can deactivate the sidebar. And to do that, we go into the general area. We have the pages template and there's the default template currently selected. And I like to select the blank no container header footer and you will get a notice right at the top here which will mention that you will have to reload the page to actually see that change because it is something that is not just in Cornerstone but actually a WordPress wide change so you actually have to reload the Cornerstone editor. Now as you can see the sidebar is gone and the page is much wider and now the first thing we will have to do is add a section. A section is basically a mind structure for yourself to have the website kind of structured in certain sections. For example I like to name this section which is like the first section it's above the fold which essentially means it is the first area that someone sees once he hits, uh, hits the page then we can do something for example a about section and then we can also make a section that is the last or cta end which is basically the end call to action so it's basically the end of the page each section itself let's go into the above the fold each section is divided into rows and then you can have multiple rows and the rows itself can be built into different designs as well for example you have two thirds and then one third here and then you have one that is just the full width right here now what we can do with those rows and columns we can actually put stuff in there for example let's say we want to put a headline in the first one we can search for headline and then we have the custom headline element put that right in there and then we can just click on that and as you can see here you hope as you can see on the left side here we have the inspector open and inside the inspector we can now change all kinds of things about this headline for example we can make it center and then it will jump into the center and we can also say that this headline actually is a headline level one so we can make it look like a headline level one. What we might want to do is also remove the upper margin here. So we can go to the classes and there is actually a classes uh, document that kind of describes what kind of custom classes you also can use because those are actually not built into the interface. But there is a cheat sheet that I will try to link in the description below, which says, for example, man is margin all none and this kind of brings down the margin at the top here. So now we have the custom headline and I would have something up there that instantly grabs the user's attention and also explains what you are doing or shows the user what he, is, what he can expect from the page. Now the, the second area here for example could be a picture to the left or maybe even a video and then some text here as well. 
to kind of show a little bit more about what you do on the page, maybe even with a video to explain what the page is about, uh, something like that. And then you have some description to the right, maybe a contact me button or a button that redirects to your blog. This kind of landing page building is highly custom and it is definitely something that you will have to work out for yourself, how you want to structure it. And there is no perfect way to do it. There are templates that you can also use. For example, you can go here into the layout area and then you have the button for the templates and you can either make the whole page a template. You can also do certain theme code blocks. For example, you could say we have three features or something like that and then you can insert that template and what that will do, it will actually insert a section and that inserted it right here. And there's another great reason for having those sections is that you can actually reorder them. So for example, this feature section should be the second one. Then you can actually put it right there. And this essentially gives you an area that is completely pre-designed. And once we click on that, we see that it's actually two rows. The first one has this kind of custom headline, a little bit of a gap, then the text that is beneath. And then we have three columns in the next one that is one third one third and one third and we have pictures at the top and we can just simply click on this element and then edit the picture or change the picture and essentially decide which picture we want to show in that in that feature area overall the whole theme builder here is pretty straightforward and one thing that i recommend is actually to look through all the elements that you can build into this but one thing that i would try to be cautious of is not overusing these elements because you can do a lot with them but if you overuse them it gets more complicated for the user and basically sticking to a little bit of text and images can sometimes be a much nicer page instead of building all the custom elements and doing all custom things but it is powerful to have these abilities for when you actually need them and when they make sense a couple more features that i find very powerful in this editor is that you can also change the backgrounds of those sections so you just look that you can actually select the section right here and then you can say you want for example a video a picture or a color as a background and we will select the color because that's pretty straightforward and what you can also do is make some separators at the top and at the bottom so we can say angle angle in and to do that we can for example now it's the angle is pointing towards this element but if we want to just have a cut we can do a hundred here or we can also do zero so it's the other way around so we can say it's a hundred and at the bottom we can say it's a curve in which probably makes no sense because this kind of would be a weird setup but if you want to do a angle out then i would say it is also good to make this at a hundred and now you have kind of this cut out section which has a different color and it's not just straight lines it is actually something more interesting another feature of cornerstone is the preview with the mobile devices and that is something that i would definitely look into because nowadays almost 50 percent if not more of the traffic on almost any website comes from mobile devices or different screen sizes you have the extra large which is 1200 pixels and up then you have the normal laptop which is 982 1200 a tablet in like the horizontal orientation the tablet in normal medium or a tablet in portrait mode and then you also have the phone which is the smallest uh, uh, which is the smallest setup and here you can see now all the columns actually are beneath each other so they are basically ordered from top to bottom and if there are actually multiple columns in one row then those columns are now set to be from left to right just from top to bottom I find the ability to preview this instantly inside the Cornerstone editor super useful. There is no need for the developer tools of your Chrome browser or any other browser. You can just do it right in here and it's built in and it works pretty good. However, I would still keep an eye out and do the testing on the device itself as well because sometimes this preview does not really work just because phones actually react differently to some things than desktop computers and this kind of preview does not take care of those things. I want to talk about one more thing and that is the menu up here because sometimes you want to link to actual sections. For example, let's say we have another template section and we want to have a get in touch at the end of our page. 
So now we have this get in touch area. This would actually load a map, but this would need a Google API key. But we have the hours, the contact, and the get in touch up here. And we can just get rid of the map. And we can also get rid of the section or this row down here. So we have our opening hours and we have the contact area and the get in touch text right here. But we want to link to this. So what we can do is we select the section we scroll down and there's the field for ID. And let's say we name that get in touch. And we copy this. Now we have this ID copied. And now we want to assign the top menu right here. And we want to create a couple of menu points. To actually be able to do that, we have to go back to the administration interface. There we go into the appearance area and then into menus. Inside the menus, we have to create a new menu because right now we don't have any menu set up. Let's say this is the main menu. And into this main menu, we want to do the blog and the home. So we have the home and the blog, which are linked right here. And then we want to do a custom link and we want to make a link that links to the home page, but to the get in touch area. So we can do a slash and then a this hash symbol and then the get in touch and the link text would be get in touch. We add that to the menu as well. So now we have the third point right here. Save that menu and we want to make this the primary menu because it is our main menu. And once that is saved, we can just go to the my blog again. So we go back to the page. And as you can see, this menu is set up to be the primary menu. So we now have the primary menu right here. And we have the home, we have the blog. So we click onto the blog, we can actually go here. And then we can click onto get in touch. And as you can see, we immediately jumped down to the get in touch area. And since it is the lowest area, we still have a little bit of room up here. If this would be an area that is in the middle of the page, it would actually be at the top of the page. So this get in touch would essentially be right at the top. So this is a very simple way to simply make it jump right to the menu point or to the section. Overall, Cornerstone is a really powerful tool and it's definitely not something you can explain in just 15 minutes. I think it's something that you have to look into. It's also something where you maybe look at demos or other pages to get inspired how you want to actually build your page. But the Cornerstone builder can do a lot and I'm pretty sure almost any page you can dream of can be built on top of Cornerstone. I will have a couple links in the description below where you can learn more about Cornerstone and I will also link the cheat sheet that I use to kind of know the classes that I can use in the Cornerstone templates. Overall, if you have any questions about Cornerstone or wonder how you can do certain things, just leave them in the comments down below. And if you want to have my help directly, please feel free to email me and we will find a way to work together. Now, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with someone who wants to know more about Cornerstone and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this almost every day. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye.